Hi, I am Tom Buecher, and I'm here with Luke Brenneman. We will be commentating the game on Saturday, and we are pleased to be interviewing head coach of the Marymount football team, Nick Leone. Uh, coach, you know, this is your first year at Marymount. How would you describe how this has gone so far as the head coach? Yeah, absolutely. Thanks for having me. Uh, I listen to the game every time you guys do it. You do a great job. Thank you. Um, the first year's been, it's been interesting, right, with all this COVID stuff. Um, you know, I try to keep a, a calendar for the year, and I feel like I've remade it a hundred times because <laughs> things change pretty much on a daily basis. Um, but, you know, it's been great. I have a great athletic director in Mr. Neuro, and, and he kind of leads us all through this. And the kids have done really well. You know, Ethan Mouth was back there. All the, all the kids on the team have responded really well to all the adversity we've faced. So, overall, it's been an awesome first year, you know. Two, two playoff wins. What else could we ask for? Going into Saturday night, how would you grade the team's practice this week? I think we had a pretty good week of practice so far. Um, they, you know, they... They're really focused, they're really fired up. I think, I think we realize how big of a moment this is where when the playoffs started and we got an 11 seed, you know, we knew we had one home game for sure, but we didn't really think we'd get another one. And, and when the game ended last Saturday and it started kind of going through the stands, hey, Purcell just won, now all of a sudden we have a second home game, which is a pretty neat experience for us. A home, home playoff game in the third round hasn't happened here in a long time. So I think the kids are really excited and, and I think they'll, they'll have a good game Saturday. Yeah, and uh, coming off that 25 to uh, nothing win, you know, big offensive uh, performance. How do you continue to really attack this Purcell Marion defense? This yeah, game? they're they're really athletic. They're very very fast. Um, so we're we're gonna try to get our guys in space. You know, Seth Green, when he's out on out on the edge, he's he's tough to stop. And so we're gonna try to put move him around, move Max Tepe around, get get some of our best athletes out there in space against theirs. And then defensively, you know, we, we had a shutout last week, and, and we're hoping to continue that on. Uh, they have, like I said, they have great athletes. They got a couple really, really good wide receivers. And so, uh, you know, Barrett Lindell is going to need to have a big game. Evan Morgan, Riley Whitmore, Jeb Lindell, all the guys in the defensive backfield, I, I think, are going to be huge. And then we need a really good pass rush from our D-line, too. Talking about last week and that shutout, what can you do similarly on Saturday night to – Pitch sure. Yeah, the, the biggest thing we've been preaching to our guys is communication. So if you were to stand out and practice during defense, uh, you'd hear guys talking the whole time, you know, to calling out where certain numbers are, calling out the formations. And, and so a defense that talks to each other and, and, you know, helps each other and realize, hey, this is what play is coming because they're lined up this way. Um, that's what, that what's what makes us really successful. And, and we did a great job with it last week. We were able to shut down all their big plays. Um, and so we're going to try to do that again this week. And so if we communicate and don't get caught off guard and don't let any of those deep passes happen that they're really good at, then we got a really good chance. Yeah, and, um, you know, thinking of, you know, kind of players that are really going to have a big impact on the game, what is one player that you think maybe we haven't seen a lot of this year that could be like a key player to look out for? Sure. I, I just mentioned him. I think Barrett Lindell's got to have a really big game for us. You know, they have, they have two awesome receivers and, and Barrett's going to be manned up on one almost the whole night. And so, you know, he, he's got a big task ahead of him of, hey, I, I don't always have another guy helping me. Um, I got to be the guy to, sh to shut down one of their best players. And so I think he'll have a huge game. Uh, Connor Souders is one we've heard the last couple weeks because, uh, you know, ever since Max McGowan got injured, which was a huge bummer for us, uh, we needed another wide receiver to step up. And so the last couple of weeks, he's had some huge games. And so I think we'll need another big one from him, too. Although there's been COVID restrictions, what's the difference between a playoff atmosphere and just a regular season home game? Well, there, we know there, there's a lot more to this game, right? It, uh, if we had lost early on, you know, like other teams are that lost in the playoffs, they, they've added games to their season. But we're, we're late now. We don't know if we'll be able to add games. So... All our kids know, hey, it's win or go home. And, and so that really puts a lot of, it, I don't like the word pressure because we really like that opportunity. You know, it's a game that matters. And so that's always what we say. We're grateful for the opportunity. We didn't even know if we'd make it half this far um, because of all the COVID restrictions. And so the fact that we've been able to play almost a full season and now we're in the playoffs, it's a big deal, absolutely. And then, you know, kind of piggybacking off of that, what would a regional win mean to you and the uh, Marymount football team? It would mean a lot. Um, you know, 
I don't, I don't think Marymount's thought of as a football school. It just isn't. It, it's got an amazing lacrosse program. Girls and boys soccer programs are out of this world. It's cool that, that schools are starting to recognize, hey, they have a, we have a really good football program here too. And so it puts you on the map a little bit. If you, if you can win a regional quarterfinal, you're, you're one game away from the regional final then against some, some teams that have some really big names, you know, and so it would be a huge deal for us, absolutely. Just a few more questions, kind of fun questions. Sure. A little off topic. <laughs> if you could coach any other sport besides football, what would it be? If I could coach any other sport, well, I always loved baseball. My dad, my dad loved baseball when I was growing up. Uh, he was my baseball coach, and so I, that's always been a sport I've really enjoyed, so I think I would, I would choose to coach that sport also. And then here's our final question. Like, if you could emulate any NFL coach, their playing, their coaching style, how they approach the game, who would that be? Sure. Uh, I am a 49ers fan through and through, so it's hard for me to not say Kyle Shanahan right now. He, yeah. he does a pretty awesome job. He's always got cool hats, too. I, <laughs> I love his style. Um, but, you know, he's, he's kind of like that offensive mastermind, and, and so, hey, hey, I got a long way to go. I call the plays here. And so I always try to learn from, from people like him and watch what he does on Sundays. Um, so, yeah, I think he's definitely one of my guys I look up to as a coach, for sure. Sweet. Um, thank you for sitting down with us. Absolutely. And talking. Good luck on Saturday. Hopefully we get the win. Um, I'm Tom Vukert, Luke Bremen. Thank, thank you. you coach. Thanks, guys. Thanks.